Jesus at the center of it all. It's so wonderful to be here, to be in this happy church. I'm also happy. I seldom smile, my wife said, but today I laugh. And the other day, one of my close relatives told me, you are changed because of TNCC. My, what a compliment. Am I changed? We are all changed because now we have freedom. We can have lion dance or so. Maybe you can eat mooncake or so. Right? We are free indeed. And we can ask Abba Father, whatever we want. There's no need to be restrained. What do you want for this coming 2015? I want many things from Father God. In the past, I was restrained. I dare not ask Father God for money. I was taught that God will not bless me unless there is a purpose. So I just had to think, how come all these oil shakes and all these people who doesn't know God, they are so rich? <laughs> Sets me thinking and thinking and thinking. So now, what do you want for this 2015? Every one of us today here wants something, right? And my advice to you is to ask, what are the things that we want? We say, we want a happy and prosperous. Wow, happy. Prosperity is some more. Prosperity means what? Can be also money, right? We all want financial prosperity. We want success in our career, right? We want to be in good health. We want God to solve all our problems. Problems that I cannot solve. We want God to rectify all my mistakes, all your mistakes in life, mistakes that we have made, but we do not want to regret. And God can do all this. And the point I'm trying to say today is that we must be bold, come to His throne, He's a good God, and that we ask. And this is the way I live my life now. I ask. Well, I won't tell you what did I, what. What are the things that I ask from God? But definitely one of the things I would ask is that God will prosper my business. What's wrong with that? That will become one day the biggest in Malaysia. That will become a billionaire. What's wrong with that? You mean Abba Father is going to say, Well, my son, I think you don't deserve to be a billionaire. Is he going to say that? Then I start to think again. How many billionaires in this world they are not Christians? So, Father God, why did you bless them to be billionaires? Why can't a Christian be a billionaire? That's why I don't understand. When in the Word of God, we talk about prosperity. That our God is the God of prosperity. We talk about our Isaac being so rich, right? How God multiplied many fold. Why should we be different? So brother and sisters here today, coming to TNCC today, we are set free from all these constraints, all these baggages that we used to hold that prevent us from growing, prevent us from having financial prosperity. When God is saying, my children, I want to give good gifts to all of you. And yet, yet, we don't receive because we don't believe that He will give good gifts to you. He don't believe that. You don't believe that He can prosper you in a business. You don't believe that He can chart a career path for you. You don't believe that you're a masterpiece. You're due for a good destiny. You don't believe that? But once you believe that, then your life will be totally changed. And since I came to TNCC, my life has been changed. I follow what has been taught here. 
I followed the principles. I meditate on it. I memorize it. Now, how many of you today, I want to ask you this question. During the new year, a message was preached on how to be, uh, what is that? Effective. How to be effective. What is the, another word, Peter? I forgot. How to be productive and effective. Right? How many of you remember the five gifts that God is, has given to us? Have you ever sat down and think about it? Have you meditated on these five gifts? We tend to just dismiss it. But yet we say, Oh God, we want to prosper. Right? We want to prosper. But we don't remember the principles, the gifts that God has given us. What is the first one? Faith. The supernatural faith. Second one. Grace and peace in our life will be multiplied in the, in the knowledge of God. As we increase our knowledge of God, grace and peace Peace will be multiplied in our life. Grace, favor of God, unmerited favor, so important to me. Peace, so important to my life because if no peace, if my mind is every day troubled, if I am troubled, if I am stressed, probably I go to heaven earlier. And how many of you know today that most of the sicknesses today more than 80% are stress-related. We got stress, you know. We got worried. We are troubled. We labor. We struggle every day. And we are not happy on many things. Some of the things, domestic things, domestic matters, we cannot settle. We cannot solve. And that's where you know, we have to learn to depend on God. Over the last uh, year, I sense that there has been a lot of fear pervading the whole of Malaysia and the people of God. So much so that one prophet says that this is the season of rest for God's people in the midst of all the turmoil. Within a year, Three aeroplanes crash. Every time you sit in mass, uh, you get worried a bit. I was worried. After that, I went and sat. The landing was not so good. It's a bit hard. Wow, oh, dangerous. Python. All the more because I had a bad experience before. No? Long, long ago. Lah. Some time ago, I had a private jet. And then, you know, as a plane lands, uh, you must always bear in mind, no? There's such a thing called a wind shear. You land, the wind comes. Then the plane is lifted up. The pilot must be good. You are in a great dilemma. You know why? You are, you are already approaching the end of the runway. My goodness, you pull up, go up, or come down. It does happen unexpectedly. So, my pilot pulled it down. The pink, pink, uh, plane came down. Went to the left, went to the right. We were praying when we were in the plane. We are still alive, okay? But I want you to know, the undercarriage of the plane was totally destroyed, man. You know how much is the impact? Just from this distance, just about one feet only. I don't want to frighten all of you, lah, because when every time the plane ran at, land at that sort of speed, uh, there is danger, I tell you. Right. Then what about the ISIS, you know? Cutting off head, you could see all those gory things. Or the poor Syrian, uh, the poor Jordanian, Jordanian, Jordanian uh, pilot that was burned alive. Doesn't it create fears in you? I mean, what is happening to the human race? We have become so barbaric. What's wrong with us? And then without you knowing, you are working in the oil industry, all of a sudden, oil prices drop from 110 to 60 bucks or below 60 bucks for ice brand oil. Immediately tomorrow, you go to work, you lost your job. 
they retrench. Shocking, shocking news. Not to talk about your currency that depreciate, you're so worried. Your ringgit becoming lesser and lesser of value. Right? Depreciate so fast. And many other events that happen uh, to know that we have 300 old militants here also. So far, la, that's what was said. To know about so many things uh, that create fear in us. And how do we live in this sort of world and say we can be happy? And this is the question that I ask God in my quiet time every time I ask God. Because I don't know about you all, but during that period of time, I was quite fearful too. Because the stock market also was so uncertain. There are so many things that are so uncertain in this world. All of a sudden, Ukraine got invaded. There, all the shares start to drop. Huh? Every day, there seems to be some new things coming up that is so frightening. But God says that for those of us here today, He has provision for all this. It is never, and I keep thinking to myself all the time, it is never God's will uh, for us to be unhappy, to live a life of struggle on this earth. Why? Why have we got to live a life of struggle? God wants us to be happy too. They want us to have great joy in Him. But why is it that some of us today are worried and bear in mind, uh, the lingering worry is the most deadly. As you worry, you put yourself under stress. Uh, you've got sore throat. Okay, what is a sore throat? Right? You've got sinus, you've got a little bit of uh, cough and all is okay. But bear in mind, no, this stress uh, leads to a bigger problem, which is diseases, sicknesses that cannot be cured. For no reason, my good friend just kong off. My golf khaki. You know, play golf with him, he just kong off. And normally it's a, it's a dreadful disease we talk about. But why? <coughs> why? Because they are under a lot of stress. And we ourselves, <coughs> without knowing, Day by day, as we interact with each other, with people, we also suffer from a lot of stress. And if you want to live long life, as I always tell myself, if God gave me another 20 years, I will greatly receive it, you know. I must learn not to stress. And you all must learn not to stress. So how, God? How? And so today, I... I am going to share with you all what God has shared with me. I know this message that I'm going to preach has been heard by many of you before. In this place here, it has been preached. But again, you know, how many of you really realize, go deeper a bit to think about it and to apply to your daily life when you have encountered problems? What are you going to do? When you meet an insurmountable problem, what are you going to do? When you meet such a big mountain, what are you going to do? That's the question. When you look at the solution, there is no solution. What are you going to do? Are you going to be stressed up? Are you going to start quarreling with your spouse? Or how are you going to solve it? And so, Finally, I've come to the conclusion and the best way, the most effective way is to learn to abide and rest in Jesus. Now, every time we talk here, we focus on Jesus. We focus on the finished work of Jesus on the cross. What does that mean? How many of you really have sat down and think, what does that mean? There were 12, last week, 10 listed. 
uh, listed things that happened when Jesus died on the cross, what Jesus accomplished on the cross. And every now and then, there are various uh, principles that are laid down talking about prosperity, right? But how many of us really go deeper? And that's why uh, when you go deeper into this, you begin to realize that this is the solution to a lot of our problems. And this is, what I'm talking about is God saying to me and to all of you here, you must learn this principle, which is Hebrew 4, 11, 16, entering into the rest of God. What does that mean? Many years ago, I preached on prosperity, right? Rest means relax. Don't struggle. Don't labor. It's from the word Sabbath. Relax. Cease from activity. But how can I relax? But in this world, we were taught when you want to achieve success, we must struggle. Right? We must work very hard. Unless the sweat comes out, then we will not succeed. And past teaching has told us even, we must work for God. We must work to please God all the time until we get worn out ourselves. But this rest is different. Rest is mean, no, no, no. Nothing to do with works. God says, just rest in Him. Nothing to do with pleasing God. And what is this? You mean to tell me that today, if I enter into this rest, then I will find prosperity and this will be the solution to all my problems. That's what I'm trying to tell you today. This gist of this message today is this. That you learn this, you will solve all your problems. Okay, let me go deeper into it first. Now, many of you are tired. Matthew 11, 28, 30 says what? Jesus said, come to me. I know you are weary, I know you are burdened, but I will give you rest. Uh, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Anyway, this has been elaborated here many times about the bullocks and all that. Basically, what I want to stress here is this, that you are yoked with Jesus, Jesus is in you. Now, you must learn this principle, and that is, let Jesus in you now lead your life. You understand what I'm trying to say? Don't try to lead the life the way you want to lead. Let Jesus in you now. Christ in you, leading your life now. If you don't allow Him to lead your life, if you want to lead the life the way you want, then you ought to go through a lot of pains. Right? For the Lord says that, my yoke is very easy and light burden. Don't worry. Uh, let Jesus fight the battle for you. Let Jesus guide you. Don't try to use your human effort. Uh, this passage means that. Lah. You're tired now, right? You try so hard, you never succeed. I share one testimony with you, okay, at this point. Many years ago, I experienced one of my darkest moments. It's 10 over years already. A time when I'm so broken. Time when I even think to myself, maybe I should commit suicide. They say, call it a day. Because I cannot stand the pressure, the fear, the stress on me. It's breaking me. And then, I don't know what to do. I pray. I pray very hard. I listen to the word of God. Right? But I do not understand this principle that Jesus says, you must come to me now. Right? You must not think about how good you are, how capable you are. 
you must not think of your connection. But you must learn now the basic, which is to rely on me. Let me take your burden. And let me now lead you and guide you. Right? But it's so difficult. See, on this, uh, when you talk about what uh, this verse here, you begin to understand. Um, about when I'm weak, uh, Paul said, when I'm weak, uh, I'm strong. I don't know where's the passage. Let me see. You know about that, right? When I'm weak, then I'm strong. Wow, that word uh, is so meaningful to me, you know. Hmm? Because when I'm weak, I'm strong. Because when I'm weak, uh, then... It's okay, sorry uh, about that. Am I? When I'm weak, I'm strong. Every time I start to wonder, what do you mean by that? Basically, it is related to what God is saying. You see, when you are very strong, God cannot intervene in your life. See, God will never violate this basic principle of giving you freedom to do what you want to do. You have your rights to do what you want to do. God will not violate. So when you are so strong, you are so much of yourself, everything you depend on yourself. So God says, okay, you solve your problem. You pray, la, solve your problem. La. So I pray for many years, so try to solve my problem. Nothing. Nothing happened. So I begin to ask God, why God? Why? Why nothing happened? One? And today, many of you may be facing the same situation. Right? Because at that point of time, I have not learned this principle that it is time that I learn to put everything onto God, to Jesus, for Him to handle it for me. When you are too strong, God cannot intervene. When you are so much of yourself and your ego and about your works, about what you can do, then God cannot intervene. You do it yourself. God seldom intervene. And I remember what I said that time in Vancouver to my wife, you know. I said, my dear wife, I am baked. I am finished already. At that point in time when I said this, because I'm last, I'm at the last already, I, I'm finished, I'm baked. I'm so sorry about it. That means I'm acknowledging already now that Tony Tia learned what is called humility, right? You begin to learn that you, what is called to be humble. You don't depend anymore on your money, on your connection, on how great you are, how good a brain you have to solve your problem. You already told God, I'm finished already, God. I'm baked. And that's where, you know, straight away God take this battle up and make it his own. And God start fighting for you. Now, how this can happen, uh, you have to try yourself. Then only you will know how God works. This is not the first time, you know. I've tried a few times at that one. Huh? Like, for example, I'm involved a lot in the international market. I manage a lot of funds for my company. And there are so many things that are uncertain. I cannot predict what is going to happen, whether the war is going to come or not. I cannot predict the oil price. I'm scared, you know, because so many things are so uncertain and ca cause the market to crash. And then I'll be in trouble, lah, you know, when it crash. So I apply the same principle. God, you take this problem. I make this mistake, God, rectify for me. Take it. And how painful it is, I'll close my eye. I don't care. I go and enjoy my life. Start, uh, go and play some golf. Enjoy my life. I don't want to get worried or stressed up. Otherwise, I get sore throat. Otherwise, at night, cannot sleep some more. Uh, I don't take drugs. Uh, even uh, when you are stressed, uh, arthritis also set in. Kneecap also pain. Every part also pain. Backache also pain. Serious. You know? And I feel very, very painful. 
I tell you. So, God, you take everything. Because uh, right in my heart, that's what the faith we are talking about. Uh, 2 Peter 1, when you talk about the faith, all right? The faith in my heart to know, ultimately, God is going to work it out for me. That's the most important. You have this in your heart, then it will happen. Okay? Now, let me go a little bit deeper into this rest. Uh. You see, when we talk about rest, uh, Genesis chapter 2, uh, we talk about God uh, creating the heavens and earth, rested on the seventh day. Uh, and very important, uh, hallowed the day. You know, it's a holy day. And God blessed that day. Right? That is the background. Lah, okay? And during that time, the Israelites uh, could not enter into God's rest because they were disobedient. Right? You remember the 12, 12 spies? 10 came back uh, with all the bad news. Only Joshua and Caleb came back with good news. Hmm? They frightened themselves. And God was disappointed because they had not have the faith. So, God says, you know, the Israelites, I wanted to give them a promised land, but they could not enter into that rest because they were disobedient, right? The hearts were hard, you see. So, God is saying to you today even, is your, is your heart hard? Will you listen? Those of you today who have problems, who have difficulties in life, it could be any problem, like domestic problem, husband and wife problem, uh, who to marry, whatever it is, it's a problem. How many of you will learn to take rest in God and say, God, nah, this is the problem. I depend totally on you. I enter into your rest and I sleep in peace. You see? And so, we had the Sabbath day for the Jews. And you you remember the Sabbath day was there because that's the day where the Jews don't need to work. God is trying to tell you, you don't need to work on that day, but yet I'll bless you. That's like manna, I give you six days, seven days. You rest, I give you manna also. That was what God is saying to the Jews, but they cannot keep it. They cannot keep the Sabbath day, right? Abuse. A lot of things, the Pharisee become the Pharisee become the Pharisee of the Sabbath. They created so many restrictions, laws, and make it so difficult. And so, the Israelites never been able to enter the rest of God. But God is saying today, it is still available. Alright? In Colossians 2, 16 to 17, we talk about this Sabbath day and what this Sabbath was before, during the time, during the Jews' time, you know, there was only a shadow of what's to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. What this passage is trying to say is that God is the creator of the Sabbath and God dispensed with it, with the coming of Christ. When Christ came, now, our rest is not in the Sabbath day anymore. So, don't ask that question, uh, please. Uh, I remember one of our members here asked about, it's a Sabbath day today. Can I walk Kasing Hill? You know what I mean? I'm working or something like that. No, 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 no. Sabbath day, Sabbath is for the Jews. Okay? Those days, we are not under the law. I think that's a very basic law. I've been teaching here. A lot of people, a lot of good teachers have been teaching you. We are not under the law anymore. Jesus has dispensed, fulfilled the law. No more. So here's the same thing, right? This Sabbath before was only a shadow of the things to come. And Jesus dispensed with this. And now Jesus says, I am. The Lord of the Sabbath now. I, Jesus, today is the Lord of the Sabbath. And I am the Sabbath rest. That means you learn 
to focus on me and know what has been done on the cross and then you will find rest. You will find prosperity. But you think, how can it happen? Huh? I mean, I also go deeper and think and think, how can it happen? You mean, I focus on Jesus and the problems of the world, of the world become smaller and smaller. That's it. But how does it happen? I mean, I want to know how real is this? Lah? Huh? Every day here, we hear uh, Brother Yuzon and all the rest. Our eyes are on Jesus. Here, we preach nothing but Jesus. But how does he apply the reality in my life? And this is what God is saying. I am your rest. And when you take rest in me, when you know what Jesus has done on the cross, and you believe, and you have the faith in it, then you will begin to see the grace and the peace flowing out to you. You will begin to see miracles. Wow, how can it be? Huh? What happened during the rest? It is actually a promised land. You know, if you look at the Old Testament, it's a land flowing with milk and honey because God has blessed this and hallowed it. And this is the time of divine provision, God intervention, miracles, and uh, what he, one of our preachers said here about the rhythm of grace, how the grace of God will flow. And when you enter this rest, you just do your best every day, leave everything to God. You've got a battle to fight, you've got a legal case to fight, the fellow will come with the legal letter, serve the summon on you, Cause you fear. Huh? You guys will know that lawyer always do that. Trouble you more. Cause you fear all over. Right? You're shaken all over. Huh? But God says, don't worry. You just rest in me. You have all this problem? Learn to rest in me. Because, which means what? Which means, try, understand. Understand that this is a position of strength. You must get yourself in. But it's so ironical. How can it be? We all believe that we must work hard. We must struggle. We must labor. But God said, no, 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 no. Don't labor. Don't struggle. Enter into this rest. Learn to depend on me. Huh? Because this Sabbath rest is holy. God has blessed it. Uh, and this is where the divine provision will start to flow. Uh, you go and pray. I pray very hard. Nothing happened. Nothing. Until the day come when I start to say, God, I depend now on you. That time I don't know the Sabbath rest. I just say, God, I want to enter to this rest. Uh, take care of my problem. I don't know. I say, God, I finish it now. I leave it to you already. I can't do anything anymore. Finish, finish, finish. I can't do anything anymore. I tried my very best for years already. I've been praying every day. I've been crying to you, God. But God says what? Huh? You still got your strong will. You still got your ego. Wow. You still think you're the best. You still think. Incidentally, I got very high achievement mood. All right? I always want to win, excel. I think I'm good. Even though now I'm very poor in God because of my back, you see. <laughs> what to do? But I still think I'm good. The mind is still good, still very strong. But God says, no, you learn this principle. You don't believe? Try it. Surrender to God. Total dependence on God. Don't strive, don't struggle. See what happened. Wait, look. Huh? You want to, you want to, you want to uh, see what's the outcome? Try it yourself. Wait, look. And so, just about four months ago, I was very concerned because there were so many uncertainties in the horizon, in the global market. Everything was falling apart, you know. 
there was a war, there was an oil price drop so far. Everybody was shaken. And everyone was depending on one more thing only. And that is the Eurozone, whether they're going to have a QE or not. QE, quantitative, quantitative uh, easing, you know. It means print, print money. If they don't print money, I think the whole world will be dragged inside already. There will be a big recession. Everybody was depending on that. I know. That is the critical factor. Because our America has printed uh, about almost already 20% of the GDP or printed money. Japan has printed 30, 20% or percent or so, probably. UK, 35%. Everybody has printed money. This place have not printed yet. And the whole European uh, economy is going into a recession. And when the recession hits, together with the war, finish. Huh? Everyone will be affected. Global market will drop, our market will drop, will collapse. So I was very concerned. But I'm so glad because I have learned. I say, God, uh, I cannot determine the Ukraine war. I cannot determine this, cannot determine that. You are the one who can. So I leave it to you, Father God. And I rested in him. And so now, a few months later, I begin to see some miracles happening. Uh, things are beginning better. You see, there are many things in my life that I want to share with you, brothers and sisters, you know. Because I'm a businessman. And every day, I encounter a lot of problems. And one of the things I want to share with you is that what seems impossible to you is possible with God. Many times, you know, in my life, uh, impossible things uh, has become possible. I remember the time uh, when I was sitting in my, watching my TV, and then uh, I've been involved in the Japanese market. Konichiwa market. Uh. You know, uh, they're saying uh, Japan is the land of the setting sun. For five, six, seven years, uh, there are so many Konichiwa changing. The prime minister changed after six months, six months, six months, six months. Ah, yo, the market dropped. Index dropped to 700. Today is 18,000. The yen uh, appreciate. Uh, uh, to almost 70. Uh, today, the yen is, one, uh, is one third, 120 to the US dollar. It's a big gap, you know. And if you have borrowed in yen, uh, you would have been buried alive by the market and you would have been buried by the appreciation of the yen because you are paying back uh, more than 50%. You see, that's why today what we are afraid of is Hey, did our Malaysian government borrow US dollar or not? That's the big question. Because US dollar could be only 1% interest, but that is deceiving, huh? because it's appreciated almost how many? 15% against our currency. So you are paying 15% now. You're going to pay back, you know. That's what we are worried about. So, God works it out for us in the end. I think that is important for all of you to know. You may have what type of problem, I don't know. Lah. Any type of problem. But there are two basic things ah, which you must clear in your mind first. right? And the other part of it you must clear is that you don't have the faith you know, to believe it can happen. Right? So, I, I just want to share a little bit on how to clear all the doubts. Uh, right? The best is to review the past goodness of God. Uh. If God has done it for you before, right? of course you can do it again for you. Uh. Why? Uh? I sat down, watched the Japanese market. Uh, at the time my father was leaving, I told my father, this market will never go up. One, uh. Never one. Uh, for the last five, six years, is a land of the setting sun. Never go up. So what do I do? I pray. I say, God, this is an impossible thing. Right? Can you make the Japanese market go up? 
uh, you may think that I sincerely wanted to go out. I sincerely asked God, you know. I'm never afraid to ask God anything because it's up to Abba Father, isn't it? You want to give, you give. Lah. You don't give, don't give. Lah. I'm not offending you, right? As your son, I will ask for the most ridiculous thing, right? What's that? What's wrong with that? But you don't ever, ever think you are Father God. That you decide for Father God that He will not give you. That's wrong also. So my thinking is very simple. Is Father God His prerogative? Yes. Alright? How do I know He will not do it? For me. Special for me. And He did it. What? The stock market in Japan went up. Since then, almost 50%, 80% up to what you see today. But at that time, I was sitting down there, I thought, not possible. Every way, every year, two konnichiwa, three konnichiwa, Prime Minister change, Prime Minister change. How can a economy uh, in such a deflation ever, ever grow anymore? Right? But it did. That's why I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, what I share with you today, these are all real, you know. I have nothing to share with you except real things in my life, in my experience. The impossible can become the possible. Okay? So when you look at what God has done in your life before, will He do it again? Of course He will do it. Huh? So, the other part of it, of course, remember, you must meditate, you must, on God's word, pray. Pray is very important. Alright? And you must hear the word of God. This is something uh, that I must really encourage all of you to do, hearing the word of God. Nowadays, you've got no excuse, you know. Last time, you got excuse lah, because you've got to use a Walkman, right? Nowadays, you can use iPhone, iPad, i want also got iPod. Huh? You can download here, download there. You can fill the with hundreds of messages. And it's so important to hear the word of God. Right? One more secret I share with you, right? Every time I walk in Gussing Hill, I hear a message. It could be from Joseph Rains, it could be from our pastor or some of our teachers here, right? I hear, right? And as I hear, my faith increases, you know, one thing. Make me closer to God. But the most important thing is what, you know, I hear from God. Because God speaks through His Word. As I listen, 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 meditate, hey, God speak to me. When I'm down walking, worrying about my problems, then a word from the Lord comes. And that gives me a lot of encouragement to look forward to the day again. So important. So now you've got iPod, iPhone, right? Rather than playing games, listen. Right? And... Of course, this principle of abiding in the wine, we'll talk about it. Lah, lah. We remain in Jesus. Uh, ask whatever, then it will be done. You see? Okay, now I share this last part here. Very important to all of us. I did not know, right, that you want God to help you, you must help yourself. <laughs> I did not know that. How come, ah? Uh? Can I just pray, God, and then you help me? I did not know, right, that God uh, is saying to me uh, that firstly, you've got to forgive. Because this for unforgiveness in your heart is a blockage. Right? The Bible also says so about, uh, uh, this is the one that sound, anyway. The Bible also says so about when you offer your gift, uh, you must ask on the altar. Uh, you must reconcile with your brother. You must learn to forgive. Because unforgiveness is a blockage. And when it is blockage, uh, it's very difficult to speak very sincerely with God. You know what I mean? When you speak, uh, fire will come out from your mouth. Just like they always say, by the way a pastor preach, you will know whether the fellow got bitterness in his heart or not. You cannot preach love on the pulpit if you got bitterness in your heart. Huh? 
brimstone and fire, oh, threatening, threatening all the time. Uh, you see some, some, some me- teachings are like that, some messages are like that. Because they have unforgiveness. And this is a great blockage for us, you know. And this is what uh, one of my close relatives said about me. That since I came to TNCC, I have learned to forgive. Big thing for all of us, you know. Don't think, look at me only. Uh. All of you the same. All of you got unforgiveness in your heart. And this is the biggest blockage for us. We are carrying an unnecessary burden. Regrets. Oh, I regret. Oh, I wish I have not done that. Huh? Oh, this fellow hurt me so much. I regret. I this and that. Cut a line. Start afresh. Clean up the unforgiveness. And I share this with you. Again, a real testimony. I was asking God, why aren't you delivering? And then, one day, there's a brother that hurt me. And I hurt him. I am in thinking in my heart, I'm not in the wrong, you know. He's in the wrong. Should I apologize to him? No way. Why should I? He is the one. And that's where we come to Alan's message here, when he said, uh, I think this is a very important point all of us must learn. You always think that you are right. Ooh, don't we? We always think that we are right. Have you ever thought you can be wrong? Uh, you don't learn that principle about, uh, then you get more and more trouble. You must know that you are also a human being, that you can be wrong. You cannot be right all the time. You are not God. And some people are so dogmatic, they think they are right. No, I say this is this. Please, lah, you know. When you don't have humility, God detests, lah, you know. You can't go far. God detests the proud. So, must learn to forgive. You want your answer to be prayer, prayer to be answered, must learn to forgive. You want to enter into God's rest, and from that position of rest, you receive everything, all the provisions of God coming, flowing through. You must learn to forgive. Okay? And of course, the other part was this. La, I was trying to tell you, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. See? Huh? Receiving. Huh? Receiving from God. It's not about laboring. Working hard. Struggle, worry, worry every day. You think you, by worrying you can get more from God? No. Receiving from God is entering into His rest and knowing what does that mean when you go into His rest. When you surrender everything to God, what is going to happen? That's important because these are the things that God is going to do for you. Right? When you are rest, to summarize, you are in a position of strength. Now the Lord goes and fight the battle for you. Just remember that. It could be a legal case, it could be so many things, but now God will fight the battle for you. Because you have given it to Him. It is God's responsibility already. And then the divine provision will flow through His grace. Huh? You will have dominion, you have multiplication, prosperity, because rest it's actually a promised land under the Old Testament, actually. A land flowing with milk and honey. And we will fight for victory. We do our best, leave the rest to God, and then we will have peace of mind, less stress, and we will live longer. <laughs> of course, la, you all young people, uh, you think living longer not important for me now. Right? I want to be here. How many more sessions I can preach here? I don't know. Hey, when you're nearing 70s, we hope God will give another 20 la. 90, okay la. What's wrong? Huh? 90, right? You see, all the oldies singing, so happy. I want to be like that too. But my destiny also is not in my hands. It is in God's hand. You see? But for all of you here today, Chong Hi Fa Chai, you want this new year. You want to be prosperous. Learn this. Whenever you have a problem, remember this message. Right? Enter into the rest of God. Because when you are in this rest position, miracles happen. 
favor happen. Uh, success come your way. Opportunities come your way. God influences the mind of people to favor you. The timing becomes right. Everything you do, prosper. This is what is going to happen. So you understand? The position of rest is that position you must get yourself in with your faith and belief. Only faith and belief. It's going to happen. Right? You see, God, how good God is. Uh, he provided all this for us, but we don't realize it. I also don't realize it. And if you don't believe it, you try it. And then at the end of the period, when you go through the problem and everything turns out well, ah, you remember. Lah. Right? You need not have to struggle one because God will lead the way for you because the one that is in you, Christ in you, will lead the way for you. And you will be successful for 2015. Is that okay, my brothers and sisters? I share this from my heart. Because I practice this all the time in my life. I need to. Lah. Uh, too much problem, too many things. I don't want to say what problems I have. Lah, because I don't break too much, you know. <laughs> my wife said I break too much. I better not break. <laughs> okay, but, uh, uh, let us pray. Lah, uh. Let us pray for 2015. Yeah? Let us pray that God will really enable all of you to be productive, to be effective, right? The New Year message was preached. I thought that was a wonderful message, you know, but you should go back and memorize it. You should meditate on that message, you know, because then it will change your life. It will make you to be more positive in life. Don't be pessimistic. This church is an optimistic church. It's a positive church. It's not a negative church. You must be positive. Right? Different now. 2015, different. Tell yourself, tell God, I will be positive. I believe in you now. I want to enter your rest. I know God, you love me. You will do all these things for me. One. I no need to labor, no need to struggle, no need to worry. Uh, I go and sleep in peace. Sleep well. Uh? Okay, let's pray. Father, once again, Lord, Thank you so much, oh Father, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy. Lord, you know that all of us here, Father, need your grace, need your mercy, Father. Even as we go through 2015, oh Father, and, and we know, God, 2015 could be a very volatile year or so, could be so many uncertainties that, and so many things that would frighten us, oh Father God. But Lord, you have provided for us, and we want to thank you for it, Father, because we know that you love us so much, you have adequate provision for us to go through this season, oh Father God, that it will be a season of rest for us, that your people, all of us here, God, even as we understand what is being taught, Father, that we, Father God, will be extraordinary in a period like this, oh God, where there are so many uncertainties, in a period whereby there are so much fear, Father, but yet we will be stable, Father, but yet we will be strong, because Jesus is with us in the boat all the time, Father God. Yes, Lord, Jesus is with us, in us all the time, guiding us, teaching us, God. And I know, Father God, that there is only victory for us, oh Father. So, Father, I just pray for all my brothers and sisters here. Today, each one of us got our own individual problems. It could be financial it could be domestic. Whatever is the problem, it could be mistakes that we have made that we regret so much in our life. But whatever mistakes there is, or there was, God, you will be able to rectify for us. You make the crooked path straight for us, Father God. Because, love, God, you love all of us so much, oh Father God. And you only, Father, want to give the best gift to your children, oh Father. And you want all your people here today Lord, to be happy, oh Father, on this earth. Because you said, God, life is precious. We know, Father, what life you have given to us is precious. And we want to be happy, Father God. So I pray, oh Father, that you will bless, oh Father, my brothers and sisters here. Those who are in business too, oh God. Those who have problems of their own that you will rectify and you will bless. 
Indeed, O oh Father God, they will be in the land flowing with milk and honey, O oh Father God, as you have promised, O oh Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, in Jesus' name I pray.